Let's read 1 Peter 2, 1 through 5. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, and coming to Him as to a living stone which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as the living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, to offer up sacrificial, spir uh, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Today is second week with First Peter series. Last week we learned that God knows you and He cares about you as His chosen. Now in this lonely world, you may feel like no one knows you and no one cares about you. But if you are in Christ Jesus, you are known and cared by God, who created you. So trust in Him. Today, as a continuation of the message, we're going to dive deeper into 1 Peter. There are two parts of today's message. First, repent. And second, live as a living stone. Now let's look at one by one. First, repent. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. Now, first challenge for us is to repent of our sins. Now, you may heard about this a lot. You might be tired of hearing the word repent. Now, what does repent mean? It means to turn away from your sin and turn to God. Now, you have heard this so many times and you get used to it. So repent just uh, became just a ritualistic habit that you come to church on the weekends and you say just a few words saying, I'm sorry, God, for doing all this. Please forgive me and I'll not do this anymore. Then a few minutes later or a few hours later, you go back home and you do the same thing over again. Now that is not what repentance truly means. Today's churches mitigate the importance and depth of repentance. Repent sounds like judge or condemn someone, so people do not want to hear the word repentance anymore. Now, they want to hear some nice words and message of hope and encouragement. So many pastors try to refrain from a message of repentance. However, you cannot skip the repentance part in Scripture. Everywhere you see in Scripture, you see repentance comes earlier than the message of hope. Today's, today is the same. We don't see the word repentance here, but it says putting aside. Now, it has the same meaning. What does put aside mean? Is it like putting a bag beside you? That when you're when you're shopping, you put put beside the shopping bag around you, and but when you go back home, you will pick it up again and you bring it home. Well, that happens a lot with a lot of people when they repent. They put their sins behind them for a minute, and they put it back on. Now that is not what it means here. Ephesians 4, it uses the image of putting off your old self and put on the new self. It is like you are taking off your old clothes or dirty clothes and put on the new clothes. Now, when you don't, and you don't want to put on the uh, dirty clothes again, you destroy it. Now, when verse 1 says, put aside all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander, it means you put them off. And destroy all of them. Now notice the word all. It is not a partial repentance. We need to repent all our sins. Some people repent few of their sins, which means they want to keep on doing other sins in their life. That is not right. We need to repent all of our sins. In 1996, I met a missionary. He said God reminded him of nearly all kinds of sins he committed. He spent days and nights in prayer with tears of repentance. Now, we cannot fully remember or know all sins that we committed. However, as long as God reminds us of those sins, we should not save some, but we need to repent all of them. 
Now, the question is, why we should do that? Why should we repent? Well, short answer to that is, the Bible says so. But let's look at closely why we need to do it, because verse 1 starts with, therefore. So if we look at previous verses, we will know why we should repent. 1 Peter 1 verses 24-25 says, For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls off. But the word of the Lord endures forever, and this is the word which was, which was preached to you. It says, All flesh is like grass, and its glory is like the flower of grass. In other words, the things you see in the world is not eternal. They are temporal. But the word of God is eternal. Therefore, repent all your sins. Now, how do they come together? It means that our sins are connected to the temporary things of the world. If you do not love the Word of God, which is eternal, and love the temporary things of the world, that is sin. Brothers and sisters, the world is temporal, so turn away from the love of the world. Now, because of COVID-19, we know how temporary the world is. The enjoyment you had last year is not going to be there this year. Whatever you liked in the past does not promise promise you would be able to uh, enjoy it next year. The world is passing for sure. Even the richest person in the world can die today and his material wealth and all the achievement would be nothing to him. It says it perishes like the flower of grass. Now flower is beautiful and glorious, but it goes away. It disappears. The glory and beauty of the flower do not last more than two or three weeks. Its two weeks beauty will be followed by another two weeks of stinky smell. 20 years of glory or 45 years of reputation are weighted by longer period of grave. We need to face this reality. World is temporary. No matter how many people would remember the rich person, everything perishes as soon as he or she dies. Now, this is what the temporary world looks like. But if you put your hope and faith in this temporary world more than the Word of God, that becomes sin. All malice and all deceit and all hypocrisy and envy and all slander are intertwined with love for this temporary world. So we need to empty them completely out of our heart. Instead, we need to fill our hearts with desire for the Word of God, which is eternal. That is why today's passage says, Long for the pure milk of the Word like a newborn baby. For a newborn baby, there is nothing the baby could eat except milk. Now, we can eat uh, papaya spicy chicken sandwich or Papa John's pizza, and we don't want to eat milk only. Babies, but do not have any option. Milk is the only option for them. Likewise, for us, we need to desire for God's word only. All the other foods in the world may look delicious, but they are perishing. They have so many unhealthy and unseen chemicals in them. We are to seek the pure milk, the Word of God, which endures forever. Maybe you are tired of reading God's Word. You may want to taste something else, hot, spicy, or sweet. So you look for other, other food. Be careful. They will only destroy and kill you. If baby eats bojangles, the baby will die right away. We are to desire God's Word alone. But the Word of God, the Bible is still boring, Pastor Sammy. Well, read verse 3. If you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, if you tasted the kindness of the Lord, in other words, grace of the Lord, you would desire His Word. So taste the kindness of God. The Word of God is not boring. The more you know, the more you will love it. 
The reason why people get tired of God's word is simple. They have not tasted how good it is. They tasted other junk foods, but not the word of God. They love buffet because it has so many choices, but they have not tasted the real food. I heard that real food mania does not go to a buffet. They rather go to a small restaurant with fewer options. Just to give you a tip, if you look for a really nice restaurant, go to a place with a fewer menu because the restaurant knows how to cook their best food and they're, they're confident enough not to have too many menu. Customers taste it how good the food is and they go there const constantly. You may say, um, aren't you tired of that restaurant? Are, there are so many good and famous restaurants out there, but you go to this restaurant only. I just don't understand. But they will say to you, no, I'm not tired. I tried so many others as well, but I finally found where I like the best. I taste it and it is really good. It is the best. Brothers and sisters, no one tastes the best food. How great God is. You cannot compare him to any others in the world. The world is like a buffet. So many food out there, so many options, so many religions. They sound all good and you may like that you, you have so many choices in front of you. But you know what? That is not a good thing at all. Your belly can be filled, but you have not tasted the real food. You have not tasted the truth. Come to Jesus and taste His grace. Ephesians 4.19 says, No Christ's love that surpasses knowledge. If you truly know God's grace and love for you, you'll be amazed by it and you'll crave for it alone. All the other menus will not attract you anymore, but Christ's love will attract you more. You will not get bored or tired of the Word of God. You'll love to taste it all the time. And that is what it means to repent. Turn away from your buffet and turn to the true food, Jesus Christ. Taste how great His love is and crave it alone more. And that is the food which gives you growth. Verse 2 says it gives you growth in respect to salvation. Now last week we learned that God chooses you and protects you for salvation. But it doesn't mean that you will grow automatically. You have your part, which is to eat food, the Word of God, so you can grow in respect to salvation. Now, you cannot save yourself. God must save you, but you need to work out your salvation so you can grow in salvation. So repent. Turn away from buffet of the world and turn to the Word of God, which is eternal. Now, the second thing that you need to do is to live as a living stone. Now, repent is not enough. You are to live a life of repentance. How? By living as a living stone. Now, what does that mean? Let's see in the following verses. And coming to Him as to a living stone which has been rejected by man, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. First, know who Christ is. Christ is the living stone. Now, what is living stone? Verse 4 says, It is rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. Now, we see a clear difference in reaction toward Jesus, the living stone. People did not like Him. They rejected Him. Why is that? because they did not know the value of Jesus Christ. They thought he was just a mere uh, carpenter. They thought he was a sinner. They thought he was not a king, not a savior, not a promised one. They even thought Jesus was a liar. They put Jesus to death with all kinds of accusations. He was born in a humble manger that no one regarded. He lived a humble life 
working so hard to lead people to the kingdom of God. But he was hardly regarded by kings and powers of the world. He was rejected by men. Even by his own disciples, he was betrayed by Judas and denied by Peter. How tragic life he lived. However, to God, Jesus is the choice and precious stone. Yet God loves us, and He sacrificed Jesus, His choice and precious one. This shows how much love God loves us. When you have a choice jewel, can you give it away to someone else for free? Probably not. You may not even want to sell it because, you know, it's, the money cannot buy it. But because it is so precious to you. How much more love God has for us when He gave His choice and precious one, Jesus Christ, to you. God willingly sacrificed His choice and precious one to save us. And that is the love of God. Now, we did not like Jesus, but God sacrificially gave the best for us. Jesus is the living stone men rejected, but God loved. Now, amazing thing we see in verse 5. You also, as living stone, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up a sp spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. It says, you also as living stones. It means that you are a living stone. Verse 4 says Jesus is the living stone. And verse 5 says we are also living stones. It says we are like Jesus Christ. Well, that means as Jesus was the choice and precious to God, we are also choice and precious to God. That is a huge identity. Are you rejected by men as Jesus was? Or are you rejecting someone? Because of sin in our hearts, by nature, we are rejecting one another and we are hurting one another. Racial discrimination is a great example. Because of skin color, one group of people are rejected by other people, other group of people. Now, we see this so many times. Living stones are not exceptions. Just because you became a Christian, it doesn't mean that the world will love and accept you. In fact, she will reject you even more. You will be hated and persecuted by the world as Jesus already prophesied. However, remember this, you are choice and precious living stone to God as Jesus is to Him. What a wonderful message for us. No matter how world rejects you, God accepts you and calls you as His choice and precious living stone in Christ Jesus the true living stone. So we are highly valued. Now it goes further. Verse 5 says, As living stones, we are built up as a spiritual house, the church. Now several times I said church is not a building, but church is people. I was not joking, because it is in the Bible. Today's verse clearly says you are built as the spiritual house, God's church. That is who you are. You are the church. Also, it says you are built as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. It means that you are holy priests. You are the church and holy priests. That's who you are. Based on what, who you are, this is what you do. Offer up sac uh, spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, let's think about this for a moment. Priest and sacrifice. And that is all Old Testament stuff. Or that's all what church pastors, church fathers, or leaders should do in the church. Not me. I'm, I'm just a regular person and I, I don't really have to do anything. Um, I'm just a mere Christian. That is, that is far from the truth. Today's passage clearly indicates who you are and what you do. You are living stones as Christ is. And you are the church and you are the holy priests. So you are to offer up the sacrifice. It's not just a pastor's job. If you are a Christian, you are not an exception. You are to do the sacrifice. Now what kind of sacrifice is this? Romans 12 1 says, Offer up your, yourself as the living sacrifice. 
So you dedicate all who you, all you are to God, which means you live every day to follow and obey God as the Lord and Savior. And that is your personal sacrifice. Romans 15, 16 says you offer up Gentiles as acceptable to God. In other words, you are pointing the nations to Jesus Christ. That is the missional sacrifice to God. So when you offer up a sacrifice, you are doing both personal, missional, giving yourself to God and pointing the nations to God as living stones. Now, that is not limited by coronavirus. We have not met in the building um, for the last three months, and we don't know when the next time we'll meet. However, it doesn't matter. We are already meeting now online. The Holy Spirit is with us, even through this computer screen. Church is not about meeting in the building for one hour on Saturday or Sunday. You are the church. You are the living stone. You do not have to wait until pastor steps up and speaks. You are the holy priest. You can offer up sacrifice to God every day by dedicating your day to Him. Also, you can sacrifice by leading your neighbors, friends, co-workers, and family members to God as an acceptable sacrifice to Him. You can do them now. You don't have to wait until coronavirus vaccine comes and we will go back to our church building. You are 21st century Moses. God uses pandemic or not. God's word is continually spreading no matter what because you are his church and you are his holy priesthood. Let me summarize today's message. First, repent. Turn away from this temporary world and turn to the eternal word of God. Taste how good God's word is. Second, give your life to God and lead others to Jesus because you are a living stone, church, and holy priest of God. Live your life as the living stone. Trust Christ Jesus, our Lord, Savior, head of the church, the chief living stone, and He is the true food. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank You, we praise You. We thank You for calling us as Your living stone. Father, we are not worthy for this, but we thank You so much for Your grace and mercy that You are calling us as Your children. Father, we do not want to take this for granted, but Father, we want to crave into Your Word. Your Word is better. Your Word is the most powerful thing. Your Word is the most precious and most tasty one. So we want to crave it every day so that we can live as the living stone, so that we can give ourselves to You every day and we can lead others, we can point the nations to to You so that we'll live as the high, uh, high priest, holy priests, and we can live as your body, the church. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name, we prayed. Amen.